Hello, St. Peter's. Welcome to week seven. We've been in school for seven weeks. Can you believe it? But here I am at home because right now we are all virtual for two weeks just to make sure that we all stay healthy and safe. And then we'll be back in action pretty soon. So we all get to be virtual learners. That's sort of fun. I still get to come to you and my friends came home with me so we could still have our library time just like usual. I have Ralph here, look at him. He's so close to me today because he loves these spooky and fun books that we've been reading to lead up to Halloween. He wanted to get even closer today so he could have a better look at the pictures. Ralph's here, magic monkey squeezed in underneath him. We have Daisy and the pig of joy and of course her jar of joy so we can spread some joy when we're finished. All my friends are here. Do you have your friends? Are you ready for the story? We better get ready. Let's turn up our ears so we're ready to listen. Turn off our mouths so we don't make a sound. Hmm? Put your hands quietly in your lap. Take a nice big deep breath. <sighs> and now we're ready for our story. We've had a really fun time with our spooky but fun Halloween stories. We've read about a spooky old tree and then we read about Grover, the lovable furry old monster, who he was scared of a monster, but it was him. That was fun last week. This week, we're gonna read about some ghosts. This story is called 10 Timid Ghosts. It's by Jennifer O'Connell. She's our author. Are you ready for some ghostly fun? Here we go. 10 Timid Ghosts in a Haunted House. A witch moved in and wanted them out. Look up close, see them all? You're probably wondering who that is. One saw a skeleton and let out a whine. He flew to the woods and then there were nine. Nine timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw a bat and didn't wait. She flew to the woods and then there were eight. Look how scared she is. Whoa! She doesn't like bats. Eight timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw a ghoul and screamed, Oh my heavens! And flew to the woods. And then there were seven. That's the scared one. He is kind of a creepy looking ghoul. But hmm, who do you think that might be? Take a closer look. I think it's the witch too. Doesn't it look like she put a mask on? You can see the string. I think she's trying to scare those ghosts away. That's not very nice since she's the new one in town. Seven timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw a cat. What a terrible fix. She flew to the woods and then there were six. Counting them down. Six timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw an owl and took a dive. He flew to the woods. And then there were five. We're down to five. She is really getting rid of them. Five timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw a vampire and dashed to the door. She flew to the woods and then there were four. Hmm. Four timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. 
One saw a monster and was as scared as could be. He flew to the woods and then there were three. Only three left. Three timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw a spider and what did she do? She flew to the woods and then there were two. Look at, see the witch? She's hanging that spider out the window. She's doing everything she can to get rid of those ghosts. Two timid ghosts in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. One saw a rat and started to run. He flew to the woods. And then there was one. Hmm. One timid ghost in a haunted house. A witch moved in and wanted them out. She saw the witch coming undone. She flew to the woods and then there were none. But wait. That's not the end of the story. 10 angry ghosts in the deep dark woods. That witch is too tricky and just no good. This isn't fair. We live in there. Let's band together and give her a scare. Aha, so they're having a little plan. One mean old witch in a haunted house. Ten brave ghosts wanted her out. So here they go. Whoosh. Do you think they're going to scare her? I think so too. Let's see how they do it. Boo! Whoa, that would be scary if ten ghosts said boo all at once. Look at that. Does she look scared? She sure does. The witch saw the ghosts and howled with fear. She tore out the door screaming, get me out of here. Look how happy they are. They did it. Good job, ghosts. And here they are dancing at home. The witch is flying away and here come the trick-or-treaters. Wasn't that a fun story? I liked it too. They sure showed that mean old witch. She wasn't going to get them, was she? How would you like to make your own timid ghosts? It's very simple and you can use so many different things that you have around the house. So I've made, here I have ghosts three ways and then I hooked them all together. I'll show you how to do that. See my little ghosts? I put them all on a ribbon. So this ghost, whoops, he's falling. This ghost I made from a paper towel. You can see the texture. This ghost I made from a napkin that I opened up. And this ghost I made from a tissue. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make those. So I put these, I strung these together. You could hang those in a window. But I also made, do you see the ghost back here? Did you notice it before? Some of you are super, have super eagle eyes. You probably saw it. Let me grab them real quick and show you. I hung this one in the tree because I made him a special way so we could put a hook on it. So he's also a napkin ghost. Would you like to make those? Okay, so what I did was I got the paper towels and I got a napkin and I got the tissues. Then I started looking in my junk drawer because you can find a lot of great things to make some really cool crafts in your junk drawer. I found some rubber bands and I found some paper clips. And then I found this ribbon. I was looking for black or orange string or something. I found purple, but that seems to me kind of like a Halloween -y color. I don't know. So I used that. And then I grabbed some cotton balls if you don't have cotton balls, don't worry, because we can just use another tissue. We can use another 
paper towel, anything balled up. So cotton balls and a black marker. That's all you need. Okay, so if we start with, this is what I, the traditional ghost that I've always known, is you just take a tissue. Doesn't matter what brand you have. You take a tissue and a cotton ball. Watch how easy it is. Whoop. If it doesn't keep jumping out of your hand, you just put that cotton ball right in the middle of the tissue and then you grab a hold of it, okay? So okay, there, that's his head. And you're just gonna twist it, not too rough because it could rip. Just twist it, pinch it there and twist it around until it stops. That's it. Look, he needs a couple eyes, doesn't he? So I'm gonna take my black marker and I'm just gonna give him, I'm gonna get, you just kind of have to like, sometimes you have to dot it on a little bit because it is a tissue. So you just dab around to get the black on there for his eyes. And then maybe we'll give him a surprise mouth. Just like that. That's it, that's all you have to do, he's done. He's not gonna come undone. The, the cotton ball won't fall out, okay? You can just leave it just like that. Now, what if you don't have a cotton ball? Well, let's make our paper towel. Now I took, I have the paper towels that you can split in half automatically. If not, you can use a whole big square paper towel, that's fine, or you can just use half of one and take a tissue. If you don't have tissues, you can take some toilet paper and wad it up so it's a little ball. So then it kind of looks like a cotton ball. That way he can have a head. Same thing, put it in the middle, grab that head and just twist it a little bit, okay? Not too much, you don't want his head to pop off. And then this is a little bit thicker, so if you wanna kinda of loosen it up a little bit to make him, this looks like a ghost with a dress on, doesn't it? So then, same thing, you draw some eyes, and you can draw any kind of mouth you want. Ghosty, ghosty. Then finally, we have a napkin. So this time I opened it all the way up. Usually napkins are folded, so when you open it, it looks like four squares. Open it all the way up, now, if you have tissues, do the tissues. I'm gonna take two cotton balls and stick it under there. I put two because this guy's a little bit bigger. That makes it means his head will be a little bigger too. And you just twist. They all kind of look the same. They feel a little bit different because their material's different. Some are thicker than others. And they're just put on your faces, however you want them to be. Now, from here, on this guy, the way I could get him to hang up, that's where my rubber bands come in. So I just took a rubber band. Actually, you could even use like those little hair bands if you have for the ends of your braids, right? I have just took a rubber band, I put it over the head and you just keep wrapping it over the head until it's tight, okay? So that way, the rubber band gives you something to put a hook on. Now, if you have a Christmas hook, you could use that like for a Christmas ornament, but you can also just use a paper clip. All you have to do is unbend it a little bit, okay? I just made it kind of, so if you turn it this way, it looks like a U. So this part that still has a little hook to it, I'm going to stick under the rubber band like that. Then you can straighten it out however you need to so you can hook it. If you have a plant, if you have a lamp you can hook it from, you're gonna have to ask where it's okay to hook it from, okay? So then it's ready to hang up for a decoration. Should we hang it on Ralph? Ralph loves Halloween. There, there you go, Ralph. Make sure it doesn't cover your eye. So now Ralph has his own ghost. Now, the other thing I did is I just took a ribbon and I connected them all together. So let's see how I did that. So I just took a ribbon. I'm just gonna cut a piece pretty long. Just like pull your arms out like this. That's how long it can be. That's a pretty good gauge, right? That's how long it can be. So then you take your first ghost. Now, this can be as long as you want it to be. Take your first ghost and you're just gonna tie like the first part how you first tie your shoelaces. If you can't do your whole shoelaces, it's just the beginning, like that. Choop. You really only need one. You can do it again if you want, but it shouldn't come out. So he's our starting lineup. Then I'm gonna go down a little bit 
and I'm going to wrap this around, right, and tie it. I'm just going to put it under, put that rest of the string under the loop, pull it out, shoop, tie it. Now you might need some help with the tying part. That's okay. You probably have someone at your house who knows how to tie it. And then I'll go down and I'm going to tie this guy on. Same thing, wrap it around once. Sometimes you drop it, put it through the back and pull it out. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of ribbon left. So if I wanted to make even more ghosts, I could keep going. This is called like a garland. You could hang it from your window. You could hang it in a line like this. So they're all coming down. Looks like they're flying. You could hang it in a line. So it looks like they're having a little dance party. Aren't they fun? So put them on a hook, put them on a string. It doesn't have to be ribbon. It can be any kind of string that you have. And if you don't have string, you can just, you can just tape each one up. They're so light, you can definitely tape them up, okay? What do you think? I think that's a pretty cool, fun, and spooky, ghostly Halloween craft. I would love to see them. If you make some ghosts for your house, take a picture. You can email them to me, put them in the comments, whatever you'd like. I would love to see them. I've been seeing a lot of cool projects that Matthew's been making. Wow, he made an amazing Grover last week. Good job, Matthew. All right, we have our ghost on. We read our story. What's left? Time to spread some joy. All right, Joy, are you ready? The jar's right here. I'm ready too. The rain is stopping. Time to spread some joy. So if people were feeling a little bit down and gloomy because of the weather, maybe we can perk them up. What do we got? Let's see, Joy. What are we going to do? Oh my goodness. They always put me on the spot here. This one says, tell a joke to make someone laugh. I think Tino always enjoys these joke ones. All right, let's see. Oh, ooh, I have a perfect one for what we just did. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. <laughs> Get it? I always like that one. Go ahead and tell a joke. You can use my joke. Make up your own joke. You can make up some knock-knock jokes. If you tell a silly joke, people are bound to smile. They might shake their heads, but they're going to smile. That's a great way to spread some joy. Well, I'm going to keep thinking of some more jokes and spread some joy around my house. I hope you do the same. So next week, we'll still all be virtual at this time, but hopefully after that, we'll be back in action. Okay. I hope you liked my story, The 10 Timid Ghosts. Go ahead, make some ghosts. Let me see what you've created. Joy likes them too. So until next week, boys and girls, go have some fun and keep spreading your joy.